Hello, uh, my name is Edwin Liu. I'm an associate professor of pediatrics from the Children's Hospital of Colorado, uh, and also the director of the Colorado Center for Celiac Disease. And I'm going to talk about my paper, uh, which comes from the DAISY study. DAISY stands for the Diabetes Autoimmunity Study of the Young. And this is a long-term uh, prospective birth cohort study that started in the 1990s um, that screens kids for the risk of development of type 1 diabetes and also celiac disease. In the beginning, we had typed over uh, 30,000 kids from the cord blood looking for genotypes that were at high risk for diabetes and celiac disease, namely those who had DQ2 or DQ8. And if they had DQ2 or DQ8, they were invited to participate in the study and they would get uh, serial autoantibody testing for diabetes and celiac disease uh, you know, from birth. And when they developed celiac disease, that and by test was repeated, then they met the criteria for what we call celiac disease autoimmunity if it remained positive. And then the, uh, later on, they would go on and get a biopsy to get confirmed for celiac disease. So the first finding in our study was that uh, we were identified the frequencies of each of these high-risk HLA genotypes for celiac disease uh, because we screened over 30,000 kids. We found that 40% uh, of the general population actually has some combination of HLA DQ2 or DQ8 which means 40% of the population are actually at risk for celiac disease. And we follow these kids every year with TTG antibody testing. And it turns out that by uh, 15 years of age, 5% uh, of these kids actually develop celiac disease autoimmunity at some point in their lives. Um, granted, not all of them develop celiac disease. And it turns out that uh, because we know what the incidence of each of these uh, genotypes were for developing celiac disease autoimmunity and celiac disease, and we knew what the general population frequencies were for each of these specific genotypes, we can then estimate the cumulative incidence over the next 5, 10, 15 years. And it turns out that the um, cumulative incidence of celiac disease that we estimate in the Denver general population is uh, 3%, which is a lot higher than anything that's been reported in the United States. A couple other interesting findings from this study were that uh, we did find some kids who had transient autoantibody positivity. And so not even though 5% of kids uh, develop celiac disease autoimmunity, not all of them went on to develop celiac disease. It turns out that uh, some of these kids who developed uh, celiac disease autoimmunity who remained on a regular diet and didn't get diagnosed with celiac disease ended up having these transient antibodies where the antibodies went away on their own. The second thing is uh, about half of the kids who were diagnosed with celiac disease were either asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic. So the major findings in our study are that we do find the much higher incidence of celiac disease in the Denver general population, uh, as high as 3% at this point. The second major finding is that not all individuals who have celiac disease autoimmunity are going to go on to develop celiac disease. And the third finding is that uh, the rate of new cases that we saw for celiac disease really dropped off after the age of 10. So this is the kind of information we hope will impact future screening recommendations uh, for kids for celiac disease.